Bruno is a young German boy who enjoys playing with his friends on the streets of Berlin, but his life changes completely after his family moves to the countryside. Being the son of a German army officer during World War II, Bruno comes into contact with a boy living in a concentration camp, and little by little he begins to understand the reality his friend was facing on the other side of the fence that separated the two boys. But where will this unlikely friendship take our protagonist? Check out the summary of the boy in striped pajamas. The Beginning In the first scenes of the film, we see the main character, Bruno, quietly playing with his friends in the streets of his town. When he gets home, he notices that his family is restless, cleaning the rooms and moving the furniture around. His mother, Elsa, tells him that his father has received a promotion at work, and that everyone is preparing to have a celebration. Ralph, the father of the family, gathers his wife and two children in a room to tell them that, due to a promotion, they have to move to the countryside. The protagonist is saddened because he will no longer be able to see the friends he had in Berlin, but his parents assure him that he will manage to make new friends. Some time passes and the house is completely filled up. Ralph comes down the stairs and is applauded by all the guests, who do the infamous Nazi salute. During the celebration, Ralph's mother begins to reminisce about her son's childhood, but the man asks her to stop and to be careful what she is saying. The next day, Bruno takes the opportunity to play with his friends once more, but is interrupted by Elsa, who says it is time to say goodbye. The protagonist leaves Berlin with a sad look on his face, while all his friends wave him goodbye. New House The family arrives at their new home, and Ralph says he has to leave for a meeting with the military. Meanwhile, Bruno and his sister, Gretel, choose which room they want to stay in. While getting acquainted with his new room, Bruno looks out the window and notices some houses near a farm. Curious, he tells his mother he wants to meet the children who live there, but Elsa says she doesn't know anything about the families who live on the farm. Their conversation is interrupted by one of the farmers, Pavel, who arrives in the room carrying supplies. Bruno is intrigued by the fact that he is wearing some kind of pajamas. Later, the protagonist has a conversation with his parents, and his mother says that he should not get involved with the strangers who live on the farms. Later, the boy meets with Lieutenant Kodler outside the residence. He asks the boy if he has any tires left, so he can take a swing. Immediately, Kodler shouts to Pavel, asking him to help the boy. Nervous, Pavel goes to a warehouse and finds an old tire for the boy. While playing with his new swing, Bruno falls and injures himself which draws Pavel's attention. The man runs towards the protagonist and takes the boy into the house, where he tends to his injuries. Curious, the boy asks the man several questions, and he eventually reveals that he used to study medicine before being taken to the countryside. Suddenly Elsa comes home, and Bruno tells her about the accident with the swing. The boy tells her that Pavel helped him with his injuries, but his mother looks threateningly at the man. Sometime later, the professor hired by the family, her list, talks to Bruno and Gretel, asking them several questions about the news in the country. While the girl can answer practically everything, the protagonist says he's only been reading fiction books lately. After scolding the boy, the teacher gives him a copy of the Deutscher Almanac, the boy on the other side of the fence. Bruno goes out to read his new book while riding a swing, but soon gets bored and goes out to explore the new house. After passing through a window, he reaches the backyard and enjoys himself amidst the greenery. It is there that Bruno first becomes aware of a fence with barbed wires separating his house from the farms. On the other side of the fence, he sees a boy about his own age, wearing the same striped pajamas as Pavel. Curious, the protagonist befriends the boy, who introduces himself as Shmuel. The two talk for a short time as Shmuel runs out with his wheelbarrow as soon as he hears a whistle. The next morning, after Gretel and Kodler left the house to visit the town, Bruno once again ran to the fence, and managed to find his friend at the fence. Separated by barbed wire, the two boys talk about various things, and Bruno asks about the fence, about the clothes that he and his father wear, and the black smoke that usually comes out of the chimneys. The boy says that his father used to work as a watchmaker until he was taken to the concentration camp, and that everyone had their clothes confiscated after they got there. 
about the chimneys. He says he doesn't know what they are for, since he is not allowed to go near them. Bruno invites his friend to visit his house. Shmuel replies that he is a Jew, and Bruno leaves without understanding what this means. At home, the boy questions his mother and sister about the terrible smell coming from the chimneys, but Ralph is quick to change the subject. Later, while studying with the teacher hired by his father, Bruno is intrigued to hear from the tutor that all Jews were bad, and that Germans could not be their friends. In the kitchen, the main character gathers some pieces of bread in a bag, and when one of the employees asks what he is doing, Bruno avoids the subject. Elsa shows up and asks her son several questions, but he manages to lie to his mother and make her not look inside the bag. Bruno takes the bag to the fence, offering the food to Shmuel, who does not think twice before accepting. The protagonist invites his friend to play, and throws the soccer ball to the other side of the fence. The other boy, however, quickly returns the ball and runs away when he hears the whistle again. When they get home, Elsa is surprised to see Bruno coming in through the back door, but the boy manages to make an excuse, saying that the ball had fallen on the other side. They both smell a terrible odor coming from the chimneys, and once again a black smoke is seen behind the trees. A tense dinner. While removing Elsa's belongings from the car, Kodler explains that the smell was from the bodies being burned, which leaves Elsa shocked. Later, she confronts her husband, but Ralph gets angry, causing her to start crying. In the middle of the argument, Bruno opens the door to warn her of his grandfather's arrival and sees his parents fighting. At dinner, the mood seems rather heavy, so the protagonist tries to break the ice by talking to his grandfather who responds by asking questions about his teacher. Gretel seems quite excited about what she is learning, but Bruno complains that he is only reading history books. Kodler joins the conversation, saying that his father used to teach literature classes. Ralph seems interested and asks the lieutenant about his father. The atmosphere again becomes tense and when Pavel goes to pour the lieutenant a glass of wine, he knocks the drink over his clothes. Furious, Kodler leads Pavel out of the room, assaulting the man in front of everyone. Bruno is surprised that his father did nothing to protect Pavel while he was being beaten. Shocked by what he has seen, he begins to cry in his room, and is comforted by his sister, arguments and reconciliation. A few days later, Bruno is surprised to find Shmuel in one of the rooms of the house and tells the boy that they should not be friends. The Jewish boy does not respond and Bruno offers him food. Hungry, Shmuel begins to eat, but Kodler enters the kitchen and scolds the boy, accusing him of stealing the food. Startled, Shmuel says that Bruno is his friend and that it was he who offered him the food. Worried about what might happen, Bruno lies to Kodler and says that everything Shmuel had said was a lie. Frustrated, the protagonist cries in his room and soon regrets what he had done. When he returns to the kitchen, looking for his friend, he realizes that Shmuel has already left, so he goes out to look for him. Bruno runs to the field, but cannot find his friend there either. Upset, he returns home and sits on a swing. Suddenly, he sees his father receiving a number of German soldiers at home, and decides to follow them to see what they will do. Bruno sees the soldiers watching a film in an improvised cinema room, and spies to see what they are watching. On the screen, the protagonist sees a video about the supposed life the Jews lead in the concentration camp. However, it is all a big lie, as children appear playing happily and families eating at great banquets. In the end, it was all some kind of propaganda from the Nazi military that would be aired to other countries, masking what was really done by the regime of the time. Having believed in what he saw in the film, Bruno hugs his father as he leaves the room, as if proud of his work. The next day, he plays in the backyard and runs to the fence to try to find Shmuel, but is startled to see that his friend has a bruised face. The protagonist apologizes for lying to Kodler, and the two shake hands through the barbed wire. During dinner, Ralph is surprised by a phone call, which informs him that his mother had passed away. The family then attends the funeral, and Elsa seems quite moved by the situation. Increasingly frightened by what the German army was doing, Elsa begins to exhibit confused and depressive behavior, drawing Ralph's attention. The father, fearing for his family, tells his wife and children that they will soon be returning to Berlin. Ralph's idea was to continue working in the interior, but away from his family. 
preventing them from coming into contact with the harsh reality of the army, Bruno says he doesn't want to leave, but his father doesn't listen, and says they should move in a few days. Saddened, the protagonist goes to Shmuel to tell his friend that unfortunately they will no longer see each other. But when Bruno gets there, he realizes that the boy was preoccupied with something else. Shmuel tells him that his father has not returned after being taken away by soldiers a few days ago, and the protagonist offers to help find him before he leaves. In order to help his friend, Bruno comes up with a plan to dress up as a Jew and break into the concentration camp by digging a hole under the fence. Shmuel agrees to the idea, and the two agree to put the plan into practice. The plan goes into effect. The next morning, the boy makes a sandwich and begs Elsa to let him play outside one last time before moving out. After convincing his mother, the protagonist runs to the field with a shovel in his hands and meets Shmuel. The boy, as agreed, was wearing extra pajamas so he could deliver one of them to Bruno. After changing clothes, Bruno starts digging, and when the hole was big enough for him to pass through to the other side, he enters the camp. Together with his friend, Bruno finally gets to know firsthand the difficult reality of the people who live there. Meanwhile, Elsa realizes that her son was not playing on the swing, as she imagined, and starts to look for him. Intrigued, the mother goes to the street and notices the back door open. Along with Gretel, Elsa goes out to look for her son, and ends up finding the sandwich he had prepared, lying on the floor. Bruno and Shmuel continue looking for the boy's father, and together they enter one of the houses in the camp, which is completely crowded. However, none of the men are Shmuel's father. Suddenly, a soldier enters the house and orders everyone to get out into the street and make a line. Unable to escape, the two boys end up in the middle of the mess. Tragic end. Elsa rushes to warn Ralph of his son's disappearance, and the father gathers his men to search for the boy. Desperate, Elsa runs after the soldier shouting Bruno's name. Bruno and Shmuel continue to follow the other Jews as they are dragged into another building. One of the soldiers then orders everyone to take off their clothes, and the boys believe they are about to take a bath, so they obey the orders. Ralph finally reaches the fence and finds Bruno's clothes, realizing that his son was inside the concentration camp he commanded. He enters the camp and orders his men to search everywhere for the boy. Shmuel and Bruno are taken to another room, along with several other Jews, and the two hold hands in fear, since they did not know what was going to happen. A soldier throws some kind of dust into the room, and soon closes the only opening in the place, leaving everything dark. Ralph searches everywhere for his son, but soon realizes that there was only one place left to look, the gas chamber. In the last scene, we see the clothes of all the prisoners hanging in the room before the chamber, and it becomes clear that Bruno and Shmuel lost their lives inside the place. Today's video is over, but before you go, tell us what you thought about Bruno's attitude when he understood the reality his friend Shmuel was facing. Thanks so much for your company, and until the next recap,